you might have heard about the recent advances in AI, from award-winning artwork to writing your essays or passing bar exams. Heck, part of this talk was revised by AI. But I'm going to make the case that AI has enormous potential to revolutionize microbiology. And I'm going to focus this talk in the context of a foundational problem, namely sequence alignment. Because over the last 50 years, sequence alignment has served the foundation of molecular biology to understanding lineages, to annotating proteins, annotating antimicrobial resistance genes, enzymes. And we're going to revisit the sequence alignment problem and show that, actually, it does have an edge case to it. And one of the problems with sequence alignment is that it breaks down over a long evolutionary time scales. So in this picture, I have two proteins on the, it's my left. <laughs> you're looking at a protein from human. And on the right, you're looking at protein from Pseudomonas aeruginosa, two very unrelated organisms. And indeed, when you look at the sequence, you can see that there's a very small sequence identity between them. We're talking about 16%. It's not until you look at the structures, you begin to see that there actually is a structural similarity between these two proteins. In fact, they're the same function. These are both hydrolases. They use water to break down substrates for energy. And traditionally, it's been very difficult for us to obtain the structures from sequence if there are no experimental structures taking on, on the order of tens of thousands of compute hours. Well, that was two years ago. And then came along Google's AlphaFold 2 that can generate structures on the order of minutes uh, using deep neural networks that were trained on billions of proteins and uh, on the order of 100,000 protein structures. And this new technology obliterated the competition achieving accuracy that's comparable to experimental results. This opened a new op field of opportunity. And now the question remains, what do we make of this new data dodge of information? This question motivated us to revisit the sequence alignment problem using a technique that we call a deep blast. There's two parts to this algorithm. The first part is what we call protein language modeling. This is the same type of technology AlphaFold 2 uses. The underlying idea here is that we train billions of proteins to learn complex interactions within proteins, to learn long-range interactions between amino acids using billions of proteins and billions of parameters. With this, you can get a numerical representation of proteins, which we then apply an augmented version of sequence alignment. Nice thing about sequence alignment is battle tested for the last 50 years. And what we've done is we've, uh, we've augmented it so that we can stick it inside of a neural network. With these two components together, now we can do sequence alignment. But instead of aligning the sequences, now we can align the structures. And training this algorithm on many, many structural alignments, we can achieve unprecedented accuracy. These heat maps here represent alignments between two proteins, as shown by the positions on the x and y axes. And you can see our algorithm is spot on. And more impressively, when you look at the actual alignment, there's very little sequence identity between them something that you can never pick up with sequence alignment algorithms. To show how this compares to the existing tools, we ran it on a, on a benchmark using duplicated protein domains. The diagonal is, represents ground truth, as good as you can get if you have the protein structures. So there, we benchmark multiple methods that take protein structures as input 
to do the 3D superposition of the alignments. The y-axis here represents the manually aligned superimposed protein structures with one being the most accurate, most superimposed, and zero having very little structural alignment. And on the x-axis, we have the predicted structural alignments from all these methods. The takeaway from this is that the diagonal represents as good as you can get. And in a sense, these methods are cheating. The impressive part here is that our method can achieve close to the ground truth without having the structures. To see a more fair comparison, focus on the pink dots. This is Needleman Wunsch, the classic sequence alignment algorithm. And you can see it's flooring this benchmark. Almost none of the structures could be superimposed by Needleman Wunsch. To understand why, you have to look at how much sequence identity there is between these proteins. Neilman Wunsch cannot return alignments for proteins that have less than 50% sequence identity, which turns out to be the vast majority of the proteins in this benchmark. This is not a problem for our algorithm because we're, we can learn the high order interactions between the, uh, the amino acids within these proteins. We can structurally align protein structures even in these difficult scenarios. Not only can we uh, accurately align structures, we can do it fast. I teamed up with a PhD student, Taimur Hamasi, and he designed another neural network that can allow you to represent proteins as vectors, allowing you to compute structural similarity and can do it quickly. Not only that, he can build databases of, of millions of proteins, allowing you to search these databases according to structural similarity within seconds. With this type of technology, we can start figuring out how we can annotate proteins based off of their, their structures, based off of their function. And this, in this application, we focus on microbial genome mining, looking at bactericines. Bactericines are antimicrobial peptides encoded within genomes, and these are used to target competing microbes. There is strong incentive for these bugs to keep these genes hidden from their competition. But this is not a problem for our methods. We can look at these proteins, we can embed them using our algorithms and perform dimensionality reduction. And as you can see on the left, these different proteins cluster by their functional class. And not only that, we can achieve almost 100% classification accuracy when we're trying to annotate these proteins. Now, this is something that even AlphaFold2 struggles with. And if you look on the box plots, you can see that on the left, all the methods can distinguish between different functional classes of bacteriocenes. But when you start looking at different functional classes, only TMVEC can, can gr group together these proteins by the functional class. Altogether, these types of methodologies highlights the merits of integrating deep learning techniques with the battle-tested sequence alignment algorithms. And I think there's enormous potential for using these types of models to boost our annotation rates, to, better, to identify bacteria and many other biosynthetic gene clusters. At this current moment, the, over half of the microbial gen genetic information remains unannotated. And I think there's tremendous potential for boosting those annotation rates. Just think about what we can do with the petabytes of data that are currently available. With that, I want to end this note that I think there's tremendous opportunity for the upcoming uh, uh, methods. And let us collaborate across disciplines and enable the next generation of biological discovery. Thank you.